So in this video, I'm going to talk about Blackman's theorem, also known as Blackman's impedance formula. And Blackman's theorem tells us how to calculate the input and output impedance of feedback systems. So if we've got, for example, an inverting amplifier system, we apply some input voltage. We've got some output voltage. And let's make it just a little prettier. Then we want to know, well, what is the output resistance of this system? What is its input resistance? Because we want to know how this amplifier will interact with other circuits. And the way that we do that is by modeling it as an input resistance with some gain and an output resistance. So if we know these two quantities, R in and R out, then we know how this amplifier will behave in other systems. But if you were to try to do this directly, so let's say that we replace this op amp uh, with its equivalent circuit model. Let's say it's just a simple one. It's got some internal gain and some internal output resistance RO. If you wanted, and this is the sum gain times V plus minus V minus. V plus minus V minus. Let, let me just erase that real quick. Um, and if you tried to calculate the output resistance, so you apply some, uh, some test source here, let's say. So you apply some test source V test, and you measure the output current I test. Uh, that would work, but it would be really hard. That would be really hard to do. And you'd have to do that really hard thing again at the input. So Blackman's theorem allows us to greatly simplify uh, so it allows us to avoid doing, uh, avoid analyzing feedback networks with uh, voltages and currents. And it does that with the return ratio, R, or fancy R as I like to write it, the return ratio. And so Blackman's theorem says that the output resistance, or really the resistance of any port, so output resistance, input resistance, whatever, uh, is equal to the R, the output resistance with the gain set to zero multiplied by this factor. So one plus the return ratio with the port shorted over one plus the return ratio with the port open. And it might look a little ugly, you know, because there's a lot of things floating around here, but it's really easy to evaluate in general. So let's just do it for our inverting op amp system that we had above. So we've got our input voltage, we've got some R1, some RF, and some V out. And internally, we know that this op amp just looks like a dependent source. And I'm going to ignore the internal output resistance RO for a second, uh, because we can bring it back in uh, if, if we want to. Uh, so A, V plus, minus, V minus. So first of all, what's the output resistance with the gain set to zero? Well, I mean, then we just don't have to worry about this dependent source. We can just erase it. Uh, and let's do that. Let's erase this entire part of the amplifier, the whole amplifier. Um, now, you might say, well, what do we do with this V in? Uh, that's a great question. What do we generally do when calculating uh, output impedances or input impedances. We set all other independent sources. So all other independent sources to zero. So voltage sources become a short, current sources become a ground. So don't worry about this V in, this guy just gets connected straight to ground. Okay, now what's the output resistance of this system? So let's apply a voltage V test and measure the current flowing out of it, I test. Well, this is trivial. I mean, if we just, let's erase, let's make this a little prettier. The only thing in our path is two series resistors. So the output resistance with the gain set to zero is just RF plus R1. Well, that was great. Uh, and if we had known what we were doing ahead of time, we could have just looked at the circuit and said, yep, it's that. Um, and so that was, that was fairly simple. 
Now what about these two return ratios, R short and R open? Well, let's just redraw the circuit one more time. So R1, RF, V out, and V in. So what is the return ratio with the output shorted? And this is the output shorted because we're trying to calculate R out, the resistance at the output. Well, if let's, let's say that we short this output, so we just connect it straight to ground, that means that we don't have to worry about this amplifier anymore because this internal model, the amplifier, it's, I mean, it's just a voltage source connected straight to ground. It's weird, definitely, but uh, it, it's essentially short circuits um, the voltage source. It makes it, it makes us not care about it. So in reality, we'd have, uh, we'd have some finite input or finite uh, internal output resistance that we'd have to worry about. But even if we did, that would just create this sort of closed loop um, inside the op amp. So we'd have some dependent source, some resistance, and then a loop to ground. So this is a closed loop. It doesn't affect anything outside it. So what is the return ratio in this case? Well, we apply some test, some internal test voltage, uh, a V test. And it's just grounded uh, and we measure the return voltage. So we measure V minus minus V plus. Um, well, this is grounded. Um, so this voltage doesn't affect the rest of the circuit. So R short is just zero um, because no voltage is going to be returned to the V plus minus V minus. So we're not gonna change V minus by applying a test voltage. We're essentially cutting off the feedback. Uh, we're cutting off the feedback path of the circuit. And we really should have also grounded this terminal, but um, here that, that really doesn't matter because we see that the feedback is completely eliminated. Okay, what about the return ratio with that port open? Well, we, we know what to do by now. We just redraw our amplifier. And I do calculate the return ratio of this system in a previous video. Uh, so if you wanna see it more in detail, you can go look at that. And R open, the return ratio with this output port open is exactly the same as the regular return ratio for this circuit because we're not doing anything to the port. Uh, we're not shorting it to ground. We're not, um, we're not poking it with anything. We're just leaving it open like it is right now. And so if you calculate it, you'll get that this is equal to the gain of the amplifier times R1 over R1 plus RF. So that's cool. We have all three quantities that we need now. And this is just something that you'll remember uh, pretty, pretty quickly. This is also uh, A times the feedback factor. And so we can plug these all into our original equation for R out. It's just equal to R out with the gain set to zero, which we said was R1 plus RF, multiplied by one plus the return ratio with the port shorted, and this is just zero, so it's just on the top we've just got one, divided by one plus the return ratio with the port open, which we said was just equal to, so one over uh, one plus A R1 over R1 plus RF. And so this is our answer. And we didn't have to do basically any complicated math. We didn't have to do any KVL. We didn't have to solve a system of linear equations. We were just able to get the output resistance from fairly easy to calculate uh, quantities. And that's the general advantage of Blackman's theorem and return ratio analysis. It simplifies one complex problem into many small problems, many small easy problems which are much more tractable to do. And often you can just look at the circuit and say, yeah, this is the answer. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.